Hey, my name's Jose. How's it going? cops started to search us for drugs and guns. I come from a very religious background, you know, my parents are Christians. A girl was saying that she liked me. This whole story exchange phenomenon is about empathy, it's about putting yourself in somebody else's life, their story, their shoes, for a minute. And without prejudice, we have to walk in those shoes and, and try to remain as open-minded as we can. Me and her were more than just friends. Everyone in here is courageous to tell a story. People talk about empathy as this thing that is just this soft skill. There's nothing soft about it. It's really muscular, and this is one of the bravest story exchanges I've ever witnessed. We've gotten a lot closer with a lot of our classmates, and we talk to each other, and we just, we've been growing since that day. My hope for you is that you'll never have to go through that experience ever again or ever see somebody get hurt like that. It was the best experience I've ever had. Narrative 4 is an organization. Our mission is to break down barriers, shatter stereotypes, and we do that through our core methodology, which is the story exchange, where we invite people to come into a space, to come into community and share a story from their life. Not only do you share your own story with, with another person, but you have to listen deeply listen to the story of another with the intention that you are going to tell their story back in the first person as if it was your own. We find that the stories that get told and, and the stories that you hold is the quickest and the most effective and the most visceral way to create empathy, to foster empathy. And we, we bring communities together that never have an opportunity sometimes to meet for various reasons. Um, you know, geography, socioeconomics, racial backgrounds, you know, there are many reasons why people cannot be brought into community together. And that's what we do. And that's how we sort of shatter all these stereotypes. And we also, we're also an organization that uses art and education to, um, to let people know that they can be powerful uh, forces of change in society. So, I mean, that's a little bit about narrative for sort of a noble goal. We essentially foster empathy and then put empathy into some sort of action. You're working with a lot of uh, artists and actors. Stink, yes. I saw Stink is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Stink. Uh, we have a lot of musicians. We have a lot of, um, a lot of writers. Um, really, you know, art, uh, obviously art takes on many forms and we we don't just tell stories using our, our voices, right? Our oral narratives. We tell stories through visual arts, through through music. Um, we do many sort of innovative um, artistic story exchanges. There are many ways to tell a story. It's, it's interesting that people uh, who are in arts or are in arts, they find it easier to connect with with the empathy part of themselves and to others. I think they train their brain <laughs> to, to be curious, right? Artists are curious people and they're very imaginative. So I think it was James Baldwin, who's an artist that said that, that an artist's um, role is to sort of disrupt the narrative, disrupt conventional narratives. And I think artists are very open to that, which is why we've had a lot of success with our artist network so far. So I'm asking that because one of the things we had, one of the initiatives we had in Fantasia uh, was actually a theater group. Uh, we were speaking, we were talking with children, how they have to observe things, people, to, to learn them in order to know how to play a role. But it's not just for that. This group is teaching them life. Yeah. Why is a story so important for people, for trust, for empathy and for connection? What's actually in a story? We are all storytellers. We are born 
to connect. We are born to to share stories. In fact, the first stories ever told really were, if you look at the cave paintings, right, in, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, that was the first sort of shared story. At least they wanted to leave a mark for somebody else to understand something about them. We've always, human beings have always had this desire to, to tell stories. If you sit and listen to the story of another, it's how we find common ground with another person because it doesn't matter where you are in the world. There are only a few themes that stories fall into, love and pain and, and suffering and joy and themes that are universal. We talk about stories as currency. It's the world's currency. If you can make space to tell a story and listen to another person's story. You can build community really quickly. You can share wisdom. You can get curious about people and they humanize everybody. If you told me a story, Paulina, I know you a little bit, but if you and I shared a story, I would not see you as a two-dimensional person anymore, right? I would see you as a multi-dimensional person. And if we can tell more stories and more people have the opportunity to tell stories, there's less chance that we can make caricatures out of people or see them as an ideology. We can dismantle all of those single narratives. That's why stories have power. That's why the, the shortest distance between two people is a story. It's the quickest way to, to foster empathy, in my opinion. What do people love the most? The sharing of the story or the listening of the story? Mm -hmm or the resharing of the story of the another person? <laughs> well, I don't know. It's different for, for people, but I know that the story exchange is a very courageous thing to do. It's very difficult to walk into a room or to be in a virtual space and share a story, a personal story from your life that really means something to you. It's, your, it's like your baby, right? That you're, It's your life. And, and then you hand it to somebody else Part one, just the telling of your own story can be stressful sometimes, right? But then when you have to listen to somebody tell your story back as if it was their own, there's a certain level of letting go that you have to have. You actually get to live your life twice because you're hearing somebody else tell, tell your story and they may find new things in your story that you never thought of, right? And that's where the energy for me is when you hear your story being told by somebody else, you can think about what they heard in your story, what they see, what touched their heart in your story. And that's where the magic sort of can happen in the retelling. So it's a very um, visceral, it's very, very emotional sort of experience, you know? So I can't speak for everyone, but for me, I prefer the retelling when I listen to my story. That's where I learn the most. You know, uh, when I experienced for the first time narrative for exchange story at the left conference, um, I didn't actually knew what are we going to do. I just had to prepare a story for sharing. And I entered the mentoring program with my story and I was so excited and nervous that I'm going to share a very personal story actually. and. Um, the time for the story exchange came and I realized that my story is not important at all at that time because I have the responsibility to share the story of another person. This person is sharing so personal things, so private things with me and I have to recreate them like, like this person. I barely know him. I know him from two minutes. <laughs> the two minutes yeah. he's sharing this story and this was reincarnation for me <laughs> really <laughs> and uh, after that was the moment that I didn't uh, expect it at all hearing my story from this person I was so nervous to tell his story that I, I forgot that I have to hear my story too <laughs> and I'm hearing my story from him and uh, Wow, wow, it's, it's amazing, it sounds good. Somebody listened to me. The feeling of being listened, this is amazing. When we listen to our stories, first of all, we're being seen, right? You're being seen by somebody and you're being heard, really heard by somebody because 
they're really listening to you、mm-hmm. because in order to tell a story back well, you have to be able to deeply listen and not listen to respond, but listen to understand, which is a different kind of listening. Absolutely.、Right? Yeah. So and, because we all heard of active listening, but this is much more than that. Yeah, it is, and in my belief, our method is an intentional way to get people to practice deep listening, which is at the core of empathy. It's at the core of empathy is listening. I tried、yeah. with my child, and I thought it's going to be very difficult for him because he's not listening to me. <laughs> But I shared my story with him, and he shared his story with me. And then we went in the other room and、uh, made made the the story exchange、uh, in front of his father. And I heard my story from my son's mouth, deeply understood, deeply understood. I couldn't actually recreate his story that good, and I felt guilty because I realized, God, I I, I don't listen to him. He is right. I'm not listening to him.、Mm. But what a gift for you to understand and know that, right? Yeah.、But、now you can you you can be a better listener, right, with your son because you understand now. I'm trying with all my senses to be, <laughs> not only with the hearing. <laughs> sure. I'm trying because it was a sign for me. I always thought that I'm listening, <laughs> and I realized that I'm not listening to him. Well, he must have、um, seen you in a more、um, complicated and a more human light as well. I、yeah. realized that he always did by、uh, recreating my story. I thought I- I'm I'm not right at all. He actually is listening to me. He actually knows me.、Mm-hmm. We parents probably are making huge mistakes while thinking our children are are not. Listening to us, I think every parent should make the space to listen to their kids, but do it through a method like through narrative four. Right? We did a program in a middle school. What we did is we worked with the parents of the school, and we did a story exchange between parents and the kids. But we didn't pair parents up with their own child. We paired them up with a different eleven or twelve-year-old. Right? So many of the parents. When they really listen to this other child telling them about their experience at middle school, many of the parents came back and said, "Wow, we heard the experience of what it was like for our own children through the stories of other children. Now we can listen. We will listen more closely to our own children because sometimes we don't we don't listen to our own children, right? It's like、um, we have all the patience in the world for other people's children or other people's parents, or but when it's your own, sometimes we like、uh, you know we can snap to judgment or things. So we love our own kids the most, and yet we don't do that for them enough. So. Everybody knows what it feels like to be lonely or ashamed or hurt. Everybody, we are all on the same road to empathy, to a better world, to a kinder, more compassionate world. Look at the news. Just go on the news and hear all these single narratives. Right. The antidote to that is our stories, and to tell our stories and challenge those narratives.